Hello, it's Dale here. And today I'm going to talk again. I know I've talked before, but I've come back again. People have been asking me about silk cocoons all week and uh, cocoons, the cocoon rods, I mean, and not cocoons. But remember, I told you how they're formed that when they spin the silk uh, up and you know, I've seen it done in North Thailand, then the waste from little cocoons, which can be uh, completely threaded off and um, spun into um, yarn and all sorts of things. But the waste when they're spinning goes off and either becomes like the strippings that I've had or the uh, the rods and they just cling around a, a uh, rod so that, uh, that, and then they peel them off and throw them away. And then of course they've got, still got the natural sericin in it. And what I do of course is to iron them, iron them flat and pull them apart and um, look at, uh, show you one here um, um, so it's got pretty flat there and my iron's got other things on it uh, iron it out flat and you can see the cocoon parts in it and sometimes they come with the little bits and that might be just what you want to use in your work it's they haven't got any rubbish in them they've been you, you can't get them into australia unless they're clean and so then it's this lovely, look at this lovely texture here, uh, which can you can um, incorporate anywhere that you want. Or you can just do various things like um, the, oh, I'll show you that again, but um, pulling them all apart. So one here, I've, I've been pulling all the bits and working them, manipulating them out. So you've got these wonderful um, textured layers and just think how you know, brilliant that'll be in, in, your, in your work. Uh, even in you know journals or whatever you're doing and you can if you sit long enough and quietly enough you can spin the whole lot out and from here but um, silk of course is so nice and it does have that natural sericin in so it will join up again to each other and um, I'll show you what else I've done so this, these are just some of them they look a bit messy and they never look very enticing to people but if you look at what you can do with them how exquisite is that so if you can take um, plain ones, that's just a bit of violin, and um, I've just bonded them to the violin, um, probably used for Lysofix fusible webbing, or I've just laid them down and stitched over them. I think in this case I might have bonded them. Or then you can um, do that and colour them um, with, see, I've stitched, you can see the stitching on the back, and then colour them up. Um, entirely up to you. you they take colour they like colour um, these ones have been dyed so they're hand dyed ones that i've put on so it makes the most wonderful uh, you know for a bag or anything like that when i finished i would seal it with like joe sonia textile medium or if it was a journal or something i might rub it with gamelin wax or something like that and see how it goes and that you can do so many things with them. So this is where I've used a, this is a paper napkin that I've put onto the back and on it, I've put, made that as paper onto the um, cocoon strippings. That's the cocoon strippings, of course, are these guys, the fluffy stuff um, that are trapped around the cocoon. And, um, and they, of course, have got the sericin in and they just need the iron and water. And then on the top, I've put the rods down here so you can see them trapped around the outside. It's not a finished piece. It's just the little sample that I showed people. But that's a paper napkin, always useful. And you can make them up for themselves. And see somewhere you've, I've accentuated the, use the little swirly parts that are in stuff that's in these. You never know what's in them. This one here I especially like today, that one that one that I showed you and then I've added some knitting in there and that when it's been ironed with water and heat has adhered to it and worked its way into it so you could you can add in anything you like any threads fibers whatever you're doing and this was just a little bit that I wove and you can see the texture on there and then of course I've cast the, the, these are a couple of strippings and I've um, just put them onto a, a um, molding mat and made a uh, like a cast, a paper cast, and I've rubbed them up with uh, metallic wax just to bring them up. So that's just on a rubber mat. And um, uh, there's a few in here. I've used them all over the place in here, but these in particular, just to use the strippings as part of your work. So you can pull out the ends so that you get these lovely 
wiry sort of ends and things here, which is what I've got here if you have a look on down in here. And this is from down when we went to Ocarito in the South Island of New Zealand where the white herons are. And um, I've incorporated it with um, images, you know, some photos that I had and so on. And uh, again, just using little bits and pieces, but I'll show you here where you combine the two, um, like the rods and the strippings and how you can make wonderful textured pieces with uh, uh, gauze moved into it because it'll stick to it in uh, flakes, metallic flakes, because the Saracen will hold all that. Now, just to come back here, um, uh, when I was talking last time, I was talking about things, I showed you Sarah Lawrence's beautiful book. We've still got a few copies of this left. And Sarah made with these, she's used them to make um, uh, flowers, roses and so on. And I used the same idea um, to make, in my Paris book, I made roses. When we were in uh, Paris, we saw lots of roses. Uh, I wasn't permitted to buy any, but I took a lot of photos. So just to make the roses, and I've cut, cut the cocoons, rolled them up, I mean the strippings, the rods, rolled them up and then cut them, sliced them like you would slice cucumber or whatever you're doing. And they've got almost a velvety look. Um, and these ones were hand dyed, dyed ones and how effective they are to use there. And finally, um, I haven't mentioned this for a while, but back in 2013, we produced a magazine called Threads and Fusion. Uh, I think there are 10 or 12 or 13 issues. Um, and they are still particularly valid. The first one was called uh, the Sumptuous Silk Fibres Edition, and it's, that's the sort of things that are in it. Um, uh, mostly articles I wrote, but other people also wrote some fabulous articles in it. And my one in particular, I did one on the rods. I think that's chapter two. Um, and I talked about them and how they make. There's that little piece I've just showed you, um, and so on. Um, they're still available on our website. The, um, you can buy the mags, I think about $8 Australian a copy, uh, and um, you might be interested in that. There's loads of information in any of those magazines. Uh, we're very proud of them, and then we just couldn't manage to keep off going. We're so busy. So I hope that's given you a few little ideas for today. Don't forget, I'm Dale Rollison, and that's my website. And I'll see you again next time. Cheerio, bye.